in order for chemists to prove quantitatively using numbers what is happening in a chemical or physical change, they use the concept of the mole and molar mass and mole conversions. If you'd like a copy of these notes, go to the YouTube description below, click the Google link, and you'll have a copy for yourself. And it also includes a quick link to my other three mole conversion videos just by using that same Google Doc. All right, so let's get started. In this video, I'm going to go through the terms very briefly and specifically go over two molar mass examples since that is something that you'll have to do for almost all calculations involving chemical changes or physical changes with particles. All right, so the four types of particles that a chemist will work with are either atoms, which means it's an element on the periodic table, one of these 118 elements. It could be an ion because it gained or lost electrons and it's a cation or an anion. That includes your polyatomics. It could be a molecule, meaning that it's got two or more atoms covalently bonded, or you could call your particle a formula unit, and that just means that it's an ionic compound and it has its ions in the lowest ratio possible. So this all hinges on the mole. So chemists use this as the standard interna international unit for measuring particles or the amount of the substance. And what that number is, is it's 6.022, and some people don't put both twos, so it's up to you, <laughs> up to you. Um, and then it's times 10 to the 23rd particles. So if a chemical or a specific particle, if you have 6.022 to the 23rd, you have one mole. So this equals one mole. And then don't be surprised if you see somebody just do M-O-L for mole. They just don't put the E. And then the other thing they might do is sometimes Avogadro's number is an N with a, with a capital A kind of as a subscript. All right, the other thing that's super important is that you know that the weighted average of all the naturally occurring isotopes of an element is the atomic mass, but what is more important is that you know that this is the atomic mass right here. So let's just talk about lithium for just a quick second. So if I have lithium, if I have 6.94 grams of lithium, um, then I have one mole of lithium. What else does that mean? If I have 6.94 grams of lithium, then there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, and because lithium is an atom of the periodic table, atoms of lithium. So that's what that number is, and it is the weighted average of all the isotopes, but in this case, we're really focusing on the fact that it's called the atomic mass or Sometimes it's called the molar mass. So for example, you'll go 6.94 grams of lithium for every one mole of lithium. This is a conversion. So if you have to use it, you could always have the one mole on the top, and you'll see this in my conversion videos, and then the mass on the bottom. Both of those are fair to use if you were you know, working with lithium. So that's what's called the molar mass. And a lot of times it's capital M, lowercase w. But the key here is that it's the mass in grams, and sometimes people say it's the number of grams per one mole. So if you ever hear that, that is the definition of molar mass. And again, the units are grams per mole. So you also could see somebody say grams per mole, or you might see somebody say grams over one mole. The key here is that you do know that the number of grams is what's on the periodic table, okay? So like 9.01122 for brilliant and then it's per one mole. So it's always one in the denominator for at least off the periodic table when you use it. All right, so let's get started on some practice problems. Now, the other thing that you might notice is that there could be some, you know, chemistry teachers or, or scientists out there that if something is a molecule, meaning that it's covalent, they will call it molecular mass because sulfur hexafluoride, which is SF6, is a covalently bonded substance. Copper 2-phosphate, which we'll write that in just a second, that you might see somebody calls that a formula mass because it's a formula unit because it's going to be made up of ions. And I can even write the ions below here. It's going to be made of copper ions and phosphate ions. So yes, you are going to need your polyatomic ion list if you do not have those memorized. All right, so how do you find the molar mass of something that's just not an element, or it's just not an atom off the periodic table. It's pretty simple. You just add up everything that makes that molecule um, be created. So for example, I'm just kind of zoom really far in here. 
So we have one sulfur. So what you're going to do, let's go equals, just one sulfur, is 32.06 grams of sulfur if I had an entire mole of sulfur. So a lot of times we don't put, show the one, we just assume that that's a one. And they really can be six moles and one mole. So what most people will do is they won't do anything except for maybe just say this is multiplied by one mole, okay? Now, where did I get this number for sulfur? So there's only one sulfur. I'm actually going to get rid of that one. And I went over here to the periodic table, which is why I have it on this sheet for you handy, which is right there. And so since I only have one, if I had one mole of this, it would be 32.06 grams of sulfur. All right, but I have fluorine, and I have six of them. So if it helps you, say you have six of them. So you go to the periodic table, you find that it's 18.998. I use some pretty, pretty significant digits here, but that's okay. So 18.998. I'll be honest with you, a lot of people will just use 19 for this one, for fluorine, and they'll use um, just use 32 for sulfur. But let's keep this as accurate as we can for our examples that we have here. And then the six means right here that we have six of them, and really we want to say six moles, okay? Because again, if we, if we had six fluorine and this is per one mole, then we want to multiply it by six of them. And then that would give us a fairly sizable mass. You're going to need to get a calculator. So it's 113.988 grams. Now, just for this first one, because I kind of ran out of room, then what you do is you add these two numbers up. So I'm just going to kind of shrink this down a little bit here. And then what you do is you just add these two up to get your total, and you'll get 146 point zero four eight and then you would say grams per every one mole of sulfur hexafluoride what i'm going to do is just kind of put that over here one other way so we'd say 146.048 grams of sulfur hexafluoride if i had one mole of sulfur hexafluoride and again i could negate that um, meaning, you know, switch the fraction upside down. And I'm just going to put that that's the molecular weight since I ran out of room. So there's nice and highlighted out for you. Okay. All right. So I'll see if I can get this to fit a little bit better on this, this next one. So we have another compound, but this time it's a formula unit or it's an ionic compound. So your first stop is going to be writing this compound correctly. So remember, you need to get to the net charge equals zero. And if you have trouble with ionic compounds, I have a video specifically on how to write ionic compounds. So I'm just going to tell you in case you don't know, but if, if you have trouble, then you might want to watch the video. We're going to need three copper ions. So that means we have three copper ions like this to get to six plus. And then we're going to have two phosphate ions to get to six minus. Now I'm going to end up erasing those because I might end up, you know, not, not having enough room, but we'll see. All right. So then what we do is we just, again, use the periodic table and add up the entire formula mass. And again, I'm going to say a formula mass. You know, you could also say molar mass because this is an ionic compound. Okay, so for copper, I have three moles of it. I'm actually going to start with that, okay, three moles of copper. So then I need to know, well, how much does copper weigh? So again, you go find it on the periodic table. I'm actually going to circle it this time. So 63.546, 63.546 grams for every one mole. Now, again, you know, these are pretty accurate molar masses. Most people just do 63.55. And when I multiply that out, you'll need a calculator. I'm just getting this video to be as short as possible. So that was the mass of the copper in that formula unit. Again, remember, there's three copper ions. That's why I multiplied it by three. And now I need to do the phosphorus and the oxygen separate. So for phosphorus versus oxygen, kind of look at how many there would be, which is two. So two moles of phosphorus. And a lot of people don't put what I'm putting there for two moles. They'll just say they'll multiply it by two. So in this last case, I'm just going to tell you, like, this is going to be four plus four, which is eight. So you may even see that somebody just takes eight and they multiply it by that. But really, they really should put that it's eight moles of it, of the oxygen. Okay, so for phosphorus, let's just go look, because um, maybe use some help finding periodic table, you know, elements, 30.974. 30.974 grams of phosphorus if I had an entire mole of phosphorus, but I actually have two moles of it. So that adds up to 61.948 grams of phosphorus. And then last but not least, oxygen. I'll let you go find it. That's a pretty common one. I think you'll find that one. And it's 15.99. Again, a lot of people will just use 16. Multiply that out because we have a lot of oxygen in this formula. 992 grams of oxygen. 
And then what you need to do again is add these numbers up. So what you might see too is it, somebody might just have like a long list of this on the side, okay? So I'm just gonna kind of put that right here. So they might have like the molecular weight. They may even take you know each one of these and line them up. But what I'm gonna do is just take each portion. So 190.638, just in case you see somebody writing them this way, it's the same thing. Uh, I'm gonna skip the label just to save some room. And then 61.948. And then 127.992. So again, those are all three of my portions. So I had the copper and the phosphorus and the oxygen in my copper two phosphate, also called cupric phosphate. And I get a grand total of 380.578 grams of copper two. Now notice how when I say copper two, that's why I did this one. It's, you don't put a two here. I see that all the time as a chemistry teacher. This is copper two. It's just I needed three of them to get to six plus and then two of these to get to six minus. Baffles usually a lot of students. It's like learning a new language. I get that it's confusing. So then again, I do a number unit label. You will hear that if you were one of my students that I want a number, I want the, la or the unit and I want the label of it. Good practice before you get to stoichiometry. All right, so that's what I wanted to do in this video is to go over two specific mol molar mass examples and to kind of touch on the terms that are involved and just make sure, again, you know, it, it depends if it's an ionic compound, you'd call it a formula unit. If it was a molecule, you'd call it, or sorry, if it was a covalently, comp covalently bonded substance, you'd call it a molecule. I can do this. And then last but not least, if it was an ion, you'd call it an ion because you could find copper ions or phosphate ions. Um, or if you just had a pure element, like maybe, say, lithium, um, you just call it an atom. All right, good luck, chemist. Uh, watch some of the other videos I have. And like I said, if you click on these little blue underlined sections in the Google Doc below, it'll take you directly to my mole conversion calculations. That is all in preparation to, again, quantity, quantitatively determine a chemical or physical change in chemistry. Thanks for watching.